make Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear And then 
Congress immediately said, whoops, we made a mistake here. We need to do something. And so they created this look back notion and said, well, if you have given away assets for the purpose of impoverishing yourself, of making yourself have assets below the mass health required numbers, and you did it during a given period of time, which is called a look back period, we're going to say that that gift um, basically doesn't count. And the original look back period was one year, or the first one that got imposed, and then it went to three years in 1993, and, and then it went to five years for trusts in the late 90s, and finally, on February 8th, 2006, a very important date, um, it applied to all transfers. Any transfer made after February 8th, 2006, there's a look back period of five years. Now, technically, because they grandfathered all the transfers from before February 8th, 2006, the look back period has been shorter than that for the last several years because they would never look back farther than either three years or February 8th of 2006. But now, I mean, actually, we've been doing this presentation for five years, and we're about to hit the fifth anniversary, February 8th of 2011. So from then on, it's going to be five years. So in order to protect assets, um, no matter whether you're you know, giving them to your children or you're putting them into trust or whatever, you now have to have done it five years before you're applying for mass health. Next slide. So, and by the way, the question which, which, uh, which often came up, it, it had been true for a long time. And, and by the way, the way that you figure out how long you're excluded from mass health if you've made it yet um, is, is you get excluded for a period equal to, and it's a little complicated, the amount that you gave divided by the actual, the average daily cost of nursing home care in Massachusetts. That magic number right now is $274. So if you were to give away, for example, $27,400, you would be excluded, for, or Mary would be excluded from receiving or from applying for Mass Health for 100 days. But the question is, when do you start counting? When does that 100 days start? Well, the, 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 one of the major changes in the system that occurred as of February 8, 2006, is that before then, transfers started being counted as of the day of the transfer. So if people would come in and say they had all of these assets, but, and you know, and or their mother did, and mom's feeling, feeling very well and stuff, you know, I'd say, well, you know, if you transfer your assets right now, from now on, the, those assets get protected at the rate of $274 per day. So people could do a lot of transfers kind of late in the game and protect a lot of money even if someone was about to go to the nursing home. As of February 8, 2006, that, did, that stopped working. From then on in, unless at the, the, the day on which this ineligibility period gets determined is not the day on which you made the gift it's the day on which you are otherwise eligible for mass health. So, for example, in Mary's case, suppose Mary had made a gift of $100,000 on February 9th, 2006, and now went to apply to net for mass health, like today. Um, that gift would, and, and suppose she was otherwise qualified for mass health. She had less than $2,000 in assets, her income was low enough, she was medically <laughs> eligible, she's in the nursing home. That gift, made February 9th, 2006, will exclude her from collecting mass health for um, $100,000 divided by $274 per day, or for about a year. Which means, as a practical matter, if that gift had gotten made, that gift's gonna have to get returned, right? Or otherwise, she's not gonna qualify for, or, and she's gonna need to use that money to put a private pay. Now, there is this whole other set of rules that say, well, if you made a gift and you can prove to Mass Health, but it's your burden of proof, that, the, that you did not make that gift in any way for the purpose of qualifying for Mass Health, well, then Mass Health sometimes will allow those gifts. But I have had challenges, and I think I've mentioned it to you here before. I had a challenge two years ago, which we ended up having to overturn on appeal to a woman who a year and a half before she went in the nursing home made $100 gifts of U.S. savings bonds to her <coughs> grandchildren on December 24th. And Mass Health said, oh, she just did that to qualify for Mass Health. Well, she'd been doing them every year, you know, for the previous 10 years. But still, we have to go up on appeal. We're on appeal. The, the, we, we ended up getting that overturned. But that gives you some sense 
of how difficult it is, which is the reason why you really want to be careful in terms of making these gifts. So, next slide. So, <coughs> your current gifting options. As I mentioned, your first one is, if, 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 if Mary wanted to take all of her assets, she could just give them away. Uh, she could give everything to the kids. She could give everything to her daughter. Um, the issues with doing that, right, one is that there may be creditor issues. For example, if she gives all of her cash to her daughter and her daughter then gets sued, or if she gives her house to her daughter and her daughter then gets sued. Well, of course, they're her daughter's assets, so the creditor can take the assets because you can't say, oh, I was just holding this for my mother, you know, because they're her assets. Um, secondly, there may be tax issues, uh, and this comes up a lot. Uh, I, I know, you know, so often I'll hear, oh, you know, I'm just going to give my house to my kids. And, and I have to kind of remind people, if you, if, you, if you own a house, which you bought a long time ago here in Hudson, if you bought your house 30 years ago and you still own it, then you probably bought it for about you know, less than $50,000 and it's probably worth about two fifty dollars now. If you go and sell that house right now, as long as you've been living in it for two out of the last five years, you as an individual have a $250,000 capital gains exclusion, which means even though upon that sale there was a capital A gain of $250,000 or of $200,000, that is the difference between what you were selling it for, two fifty, dollars and what you bought it for, $50,000, you, because you were living in it, get to exclude that gain in your income tax return, and therefore you won't pay a tax. If you transfer that house to your, if, and, and, and by the way, if you're a couple, you each get that 250, which means you have a total exclusion of $500,000. If you transfer that house to your daughter or son or to all the kids, even a worse example, but we, which we already talked about, but if you transfer it to your child and the child sells that house the next day, the child pays the capital gain, however. It is when you make the gift, you give them your tax basis, which is their purchase price of $50,000. But unless they've been living in it for two out of the previous five years, they don't get the exclusion. So they pay the capital gain, which is a total of about 20%. So they'd be, if you, if the, if in this case, Mary transferred the house to her daughter, and her daughter sold the house the next day, um, she'd pay a tax on 20%, she'd pay 20% of $200,000, or about $40,000 in capital gains tax. So there's a really good reason why you try to not structure things so that you're just giving assets to your children on which they're going to have to pay these huge taxes. 